Oh. Use a medkit. Oh, maybe I need to get around it. Oh, shit. So maybe I need to go back the way the orb came. Or go up here? I don't know where I'm going anymore. I'll take it. On the corner, go. Oh. Okay, trying again. Hopefully the guillotines on this side don't work. Well, that one sort of did. Alright, I'm safe for now. Oh. And it's actually bright in here. It's actually really bright. Okay, I have four med kits. I have five shots for the shotgun. Let's use a med kit. <laughs> Are these the scales of justice? Uh. So what am I comparing, exactly? I'm probably going to be putting things like crime evidence, prison shank, morning badge. Probably just those things. These are all bad things, right? It's not like I'm going to weigh them against something else. They just all go on one side, right? That's a grim image. There's nothing I could put on the other side that makes sense, right? I mean, it's not like... The good is, I killed an innocent person. I mean, the, the bad is, I killed an innocent person. The upside of it is... Hmm? There is no upside. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's a- oh, they're charging something up. This is the person in the wheelchair, which must have been the person we killed, or almost killed. Person we left maimed and... Yeah. All sorts of life support systems. Oh, okay. It's not like a timing thing. You just can't do that right now. 
So wait, am I gonna be yanking out their life support? Fuck. They're gonna hit me again. Yeah. Does that temporarily weaken them and I need to pull this out while they're, like, shocked? I'm gonna heal myself. And I'm gonna go back up. This is so grim. Maybe you can't do it the first time, because the shocky thing. Ow. Yeah, you gotta do it twice? Gotcha. Yeah, I have a shit ton of ammo for the shotgun. So I can kind of just keep distracting. Oh, damn it. It's like shooting electricity at me. Okay, I need to get to the other ventilators. How do I get over there? Stop that. Yeah, how do I get over there? Oh, fuck. Nice and safe in here. Never mind. Get 
Oh, I see. Oh, I see. What the fuck? That is so weird. There's just a chair sitting in there. Ah! How do I get past that? Do I have to get hit? What? And I should use it. No, no. Maybe. What's in there? Oh, thanks. No. Like, I've tried shooting these before when they're on the wall and it didn't do anything. But maybe I'll try shooting them now. Oh, come on. Fuck you. Okay, that sort of worked. not doing the shocky thing, so I think I can just go straight there. Gotta go a different way to get to the other one. Actually, which which way do I go? Oh, is it this one? Oh, it's this one. Could you? What? He was a good man. A good man. What the hell are you talking about? That thing tried to kill me. It's not a man, it's a monster. No. No, it's not how it was supposed to go. 
That's not what I agreed to. Murphy? Is that you? Officer Coleridge? Jeez, I'm glad it's just you. This thing is kicking off something fierce. I knew you'd be smart enough to steer clear of it. What are you doing here? Sewell told me to meet him here. You haven't seen him, have you? He ain't answering his radio. Are you okay, Murph? You don't look so good. What's that you got there? What the hell's going on, Murphy? No. This isn't what I agreed to. What are you talking about? Ag agreed to what? Tell him, Murph. What's going on here, Sewell? Why didn't you answer the radio? Should have learned to keep your big fucking mouth shut, Frank. Now my friend Murphy's got to shut it for you. Murphy, don't, don't do this. Come on, Murphy, you gonna keep your end of the bargain or not? <laughs> do it, Murphy. you son of a bitch! No! No. You know, he was a great man, my dad. Didn't matter who you were, family, friends, even prisoners. He treated everyone with respect. Always looking for the positive side of people. I wanted to be just like him. You don't understand. Your father treated me like one of his own. I never... He didn't die right away, you know. After you were done beating the life out of him. He spent years in that wheelchair. A... a fucking vegetable. Did you know that? And I had to watch this. This wonderful man. Shit and piss all over himself. Day after day after day. And every time I looked at him... You know what I saw? Listen to me. I, I... saw... a monster. I saw you. Just calm down a minute, and let me tell you what really happened. You don't know how many strings I had to pull to get your transfer approved, to get you to my prison. The favors I had to call in, the sick things I had to do to get you under my watch. You don't have to do this. My father was a good man. He didn't believe in revenge. But I do. <laughs> okay, this is really cool. Um, I do want to say something though. I'm pretty like, given all the things we've seen and the sort of person that Murphy is, I'm like 99% sure that he really did not kill Frank, Frank Coleridge. Pretty certain of that. Since Sewell was there, I think when I pulled out of it, Sewell probably did the job for me and blamed it on me. I mean... <laughs> A guard blaming a, a crime on a prisoner who was there with a shank? That's... Uh, I mean, who are they going to believe? It'd be easy to pin it on them. It must have been Sewell. Yeah. Murphy would not do that. And it's really cool that... I, <laughs> I don't know their name. I still don't know this cop's name, but it's really cool that they see us as the monster and, and now we literally are the monster. Pay for what you did. Why won't you die?
I'm close enough to hit her, but I don't want to. I don't want to kill them. Why won't you die? Hopefully it's not just like a unlimited hallway. Okay, now they're kind of going backwards. Hmm. What if I walk away? Or take enough shots? I can die. Did I wake you, Cunningham? Come on. Rise and shine. You know the drill. What? Where am I? What's going on? Guess today's the big day, huh? Tell you the truth, I'm sort of sorry to see you go. Prisoner secure. Open 302B. Transfer. Oh. Okay. Um, right. There's a lot to talk about. First, my, uh, my worry that taking the boat would be the end of the game was true. There's a lot I didn't do. Holy crap. I... Sometimes games will do a thing where when you go to do something like that, like right when you would go to use the keys on the boat, it would have a pop-up that would say something like... You know, you will not be able to go back from this point. Are you sure you want to continue? I wish they did that. That would have been very nice. I remember Deus Ex Human Revolution did that. Yeah, that would have been nice. I wanted to stay and do a lot of other things. So the way I interpret that ending is that because they killed us, they're left alive and now Silent Hill is just putting them through this torture. Where they're the prisoner, and me, the person they think is a monster, is their jailer. I'm the Sewell character. So I think Silent Hill is just torturing them. That's my interpretation. Anyway, you can definitely get different endings. Like, if I kill her, I'm certain that would give me a different ending. So let's go try it. Oh, I can spare or kill. It's a choice. Okay. Spare. <laughs> it's never worked in the past though, huh? Everything always goes wrong. No. I won't do it. Yeah, I thought you might say that. No! 
Jesus, you're pathetic. What about Napier? The guy kills your boy. You go through all the trouble of getting yourself locked up with him, and what happens? I serve him to you like a fucking Christmas goose, and you can't even finish the job. No, I gotta go in there and finish the bastard off for you. I ask for one little favor in return. Murphy, run! And this is the fat side oh, Frank! Put your hands where I can see them. You son of a... I'm not gonna tell you again. Sewell here. We got an officer down. Ten double zero. C block. Shower level. Over. You can't do this. I didn't. Whose prints do you think are on that ship? 10-4. Backup's on its way. Sit tight. Roger that. Should've just kept your end of the deal, Murph. Cop killers don't last too long in here. I'm sorry, Frank. I'm sorry, Frank. It wasn't you. It was my fault he died. Pendleton. I'm so sorry. I forgive you. Is this... Are we free? Yeah. I think we are. All units respond. Lyle Prison DOC bus involved in the TC. Fatalities eastbound 73. Fire and rescue en route. I should go. I guess you better. Wait. Where are you going? There's some place I gotta be. Murphy, wait. Thank you. For what? The truth. here so soon sweetheart can't get enough of the place <laughs> the hell's this you used to work with my father Frank Coleridge yeah so we need to talk <laughs> Oh, Silver Trophy ending B. Okay, uh, let's go back and choose to kill her and see what happens. Assembled here to witness the state's execution of Murphy Pendleton, sentenced for the murder of his seven-year-old son. The couple had divorced four years earlier, and prosecutors believe Pendleton drowned his son Charlie in retaliation for his ex-wife seeking sole custody. More recently, Pendleton was tried and convicted for the murder of decorated officer Frank Coleridge during a Ryle State prison riot, which expedited Pendleton's execution sentence amidst public furor. This is it, Pendleton. Any last words?
Yeah. I'll see you in hell. Cupcake. So I guess in that ending we get blamed for everything. For killing our son? Which, it must have been Napier that ditched the body in the water. And then we get blamed for Frank Ulrich's death, which, I mean, in this ending maybe we did do it, but probably not. Yeah, it's just a bad ending. Okay, um, I have a couple questions I want to answer by, like, searching online, looking at wikis and stuff like that. I want to know if there's any other endings. Okay, so there are other endings. There's six total endings. Only five of them are really genuine. One of them's a joke that you can only get if you play the game a second time. And out of the six possible endings, I think... How many did we see? I think four? Three or four? Um, I think there's two of them that I didn't get and can't get because of my moral score. The way the moral score works, uh, it says the first factor is the moral score, increased or decreased depending on the moral choices made during gameplay, like did Murphy attempt to save Anne on a cliff, did he pressure JP to suicide or try to talk him out of it, and how many monsters the player has killed. Positive score could be obtained when Murphy makes positive moral choices and by sparing the lives of monsters. A negative score is accumulated when Murphy makes poor moral choices and when he kills monsters rather than incapacitating or ignoring them. Okay, well I made good moral choices in terms of saving characters, but I guess I did kill a lot of monsters. So that's probably why I ended up with a negative score, because all my endings were ones that you could only get with a negative score. So the endings that I couldn't get, one of them is ending A, and that's finishing the game with a positive score and striking Anne at the end, so you start that cutscene where you decide whether to spare them or not, and choosing to spare them. And that gives you ending A if you do that with a positive score. And it sounds really similar to the other ending that we got where back at the scene of the crash and kind of talk a little bit and they go their separate ways. It sounds very similar to that. The only difference is it does not include the sequence where Anne goes to kill Sewell. Another one is ending C, which is achieved by killing Anne with a positive score. And if you do that, long story short, basically Murphy ends up in limbo in Silent Hill, stuck basically being tortured. And then there's also the surprise joke ending, which you can only get on a second playthrough, and guess what that involves? That involves those weird graves that I saw all around the town, with those two candles always right next to them, and I, I even got a shovel and thought, hey, I can maybe dig these up or something and could never do anything with them. Yeah, it turns out they are used, but only on a second playthrough to get the joke ending. So I left a lot undone as well in terms of side quests, so I'm just looking up a couple of them to see what they do. Looking at the Shadow Sigil quest, if you complete that, what you get is a demon statue. It appears right on top of the map, and you can take it, and it's actually a melee weapon. It has high power and extremely high durability, but will break after an extended period of use. Strangely enough, Murphy Pendleton swings it like a knife. This is probably due to the limited amounts of attack animation, so it goes under the knife animation. That is really weird. This Shadow Sigil seemed like such a big thing, taking you all around town and all you get out of it is some statue melee weapon? I mean, you're trying to slice demons with a statue of a demon? I, hmm. I'm glad I didn't do that. And for the birdcage side quest, uh, the cutscene, you know how every time you release a bird it shows you like a little bit more of that cutscene of Murphy walking in a field of flowers? The cutscenes show Murphy Pendleton walking through a flower-covered field to find his son under a tree. Yeah, I thought that might be what would happen, because it just seemed like a, doing something nice like that, freeing a bird. A little bit of light in the darkness. Okay, so let's wrap up with some thoughts on the game. At completing it without doing all the side quests feels really weird, or at least it felt really weird until I looked up what they actually do, and now I think, wow, those really were kind of silly and weren't worth it for the most part. 
The birdcage one, I would have liked to have done. But the shadow sigil one? Nah. <laughs> That's just silly. But big picture thoughts. I really enjoyed Silent Hill Downpour, especially after the point where we met the DJ. Which, by the way, whatever happened to the DJ? I hope they lived, but... I mean, you know, at Silent Hill, they probably didn't. After that point, I was just super invested in the story. I like the way the mystery slowly unfolds. It felt a little bit like Silent Hill 4 in the sense that the story is... It's just like building and adding little pieces onto it. Just constantly building my understanding of what actually happened. Little by little by little. And in the end, I feel like I really understood everything that was happening, for the most part, surprisingly well. Because Silent Hill can be very obtuse, it can be very hard to understand, it can be very symbolic, and I guess the symbology was more blatant in Silent Hill Downpour than some of the others. So on one hand, maybe it's a little bit less interesting that there's not as much subtlety to everything in the game, but on the other hand, it's very satisfying to actually finish a Silent Hill game and feel like, you know what, I I got it. I understood it. I also want to applaud it for taking Silent Hill in a very different direction from the original 4. It did not just copy the formula at all, like Silent Hill Origins did, for example. No, it's more like Shattered Memories in the sense that it just did something very new with it. Except unlike Shattered Memories, it actually did a pretty good job of it. The whole feel of it is just completely different. It feels a bit more like a, you know, it's got the more typical kind of control scheme that I'm more comfortable with, where it's over the shoulder third person. It's got a semi open world, which is kind of like a modern AAA kind of a cliche at this point. And I don't think they made great use of the open worldness, especially with a lot of the side quests being pretty meh. But I really do appreciate that they tried something new. I think this is the first Silent Hill game I've played where the main character actually has a personality and is actually interesting. In Silent Hill 1 and 3, or no, sorry, 1 and 4, the characters are just so boring. In 3, Heather was actually an interesting character, but we didn't really get to see much from them. Uh, Origins, main character's super boring, some generic trucker dude. Shattered memories, uh, a bit of characterization there, but not too interesting. But this one, Murphy Pendleton is actually a really well-realized character. I really got to know them and really got to like them, and I think their voice actor did a fantastic job, along with all the other voice actors in the whole game, except for that one kid who was really bad. But other than that, the performances were fantastic. Downpour also had some amazing set pieces. Just really absolutely gorgeous and mind-bending and interesting set pieces. I think I'll end it there so I don't just ramble on and on. Yeah, Silent Hill Downpour, pretty flawed, but really good. I loved it. I hope you enjoyed as well, and thanks for watching.